Sending money abroad just got a whole lot easier with AfriX. A slick app makes international transfer crazy fast and super secure. Just tap a few buttons, money sent across the board in a minute. One magic of AfriX is that you can add your debit card or load money to your AfriX wallet right in the app, then send those funds to your recipient overseas straight to their bank account at lightning speed and zero fees. Use the promo code CHOCO and get a one-time $15 bonus if you send money of up to $50. You can earn a one-time bonus of $20 if you refer your friends and they send up to $150. Whether you're in the USA, Canada, Europe or anywhere in the world, you can now instantly deposit money into your loved one's bank account in the app home counter. It's the fastest, easiest way to send them the cash they need right in the app so there's no mystery fees. AfriX brings some money magic to transfers. No piles of paperwork or long verifications here. We make it easy with just a few quick ID uploads. Accounts verified in just 1-5 to five hours so they are ready for instant transfers. Ditch the red tapes and outrageous fees of traditional wire transfers. Join the AfriX revolution for blazing fast, secure, low-cost money sending worldwide. AfriX, proudly African. The power of financial freedom is now in your pocket. AfriX, best rates at no cost with no hidden fees. So stop waiting and start sending today. Tuesday, uh, actually today is Wednesday, right? And then I hope you're doing very fine. Today's Wednesday, the day after the policy on the restriction for spousal open work permit for international students. What I want to do is to use this video to address what I think could be potential misconceptions. Um, so long as the, the new policy announcement is concerned. Remember, as you're watching this, I'm a lay guy here in Canada. I am not an immigration expert. I don't pretend to know policies as an immigration expert. So whatever I share here is my attempt to make sense of things. Please do not misconstrue or assume that every information you get here is an immigration and advice it's not all right i'm just a regular guy do your research um if possible consult a licensed canadian immigration consultant or an immigration lawyer if you feel that you need clarity on things that are very important to you okay all right so yesterday the immigration commission of canada ircc announced that effective from March 19, today is March 20th, effective from March 19, the option for uh, spousal open work permit <coughs> for the international students will no longer be available at certain levels of education. I, I did a short video capturing those aspects that were affected, but I also figured that people will still have some misconceptions or misunderstandings. So let's make sense of everything together, all right? Let's make sense of everything together. Now, first of all, the policy does not affect everyone. The restriction or spousal open work permit does not affect everyone. It only affects some people. So I don't want us to assume that this is a policy that is targeting like all international students. It's not. It's not the case, okay? It's not the case. It will affect some people, but not everybody. So you got to know whether you are affected or you are not in a category of persons that are affected. The first group of people who will not be affected by this policy are individuals who are studying in Canada whose marital status remains as single. Single. Single means you are not married. Single, okay? So if you're a single folk watching this video, you cannot be bothered by this policy. At least not for now. Maybe in the long term, maybe yes. For now, you are not affected, all right? What that means is that if you're not married, and you are single and you are applying for your visa this policy 
know they touch you. It be the people where they marry, where they, they won't bring them and families, where this policy they affect. You understand? Single folks, you cannot be bothered about this policy, at least for now. At least for now, okay? All right. The second group of people who are not affected by this policy are people who already hold an open work permit because they are spouses of some international students spouses of international students not affected ah i see some africans walking i see some people walking on the side and i think i may know them <laughs> or even if i don't know them they will eventually be people that maybe i may know they are coming two ladies walking in the cold the weather today man it'll be easy the weather today no be easy. The weather, if it, if it chilly, hi, you take your body calm. The way you go, it go freeze you, eh? Ajia, 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 Ajia. Hello, how are you? I'm from Ghana, where are you? Are you from Ghana too? No. I'm from Ghana, what about you? Nigeria. You're from Nigeria? Okay, Niger Jolof. And you are walking? Yeah, I'm doing a live video, so if you walk out there, your back will show you my video. I'm just telling you, just in case you walk forward. Okay. I'm doing a live video I'm on YouTube okay. right now. Can you just be going? Eh? No, no. no, no. no when you walk, you your back will show, but I'm just giving you the notice that okay. as you walk okay. ahead, your back will show, not your face. Okay. But I just wanted to say hello to you. Okay. Niger Jolo, where they walk for cold weather like this, madam. Eh? Madam, this is where they walk for cold weather. The weather, they enter you anyway. Let me see. <laughs> Uh, oh, let me give you guys a ride. Uh, past the back, come inside. My car is messed up because I'm coming from a renovation site. So don't mind the inside, yeah? I have some renovation stuff in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So guys, bear with me. You know, when you watch my live videos, there's a lot of distractions in the background. Just because we have to do what we have to do, isn't it? Yeah, bear with me. Okay, let me open the door for you guys. Okay, nice all right, two ladies, one from Ghana, one from Nigeria. Nigeria. Which part of Nigeria, though? Um, Ibadan. Which part of Nigeria? Which state? Ibadan. Ibadan. Okay. All right, guys. So, so let me guess. Are you guys coming from the bus terminal or from shopping or what? What? Which one is it? What is it? The African yeah, store. You, oh, you are going there now? Yes. Oh, okay. This is a corner store. Okay. So let me turn around and take you guys there. Okay. You're going to shop. Yeah. Buying some African grocery stuff, right? Yes. Uh, hunger, they catch, man. Ah, it be so, it be so, it be so. So, Ajia, do you already know this lady? Uh, this Nigerian lady? Or you guys were just happened to be walking around the same? No, we met in school. We met you met in school. You became friends? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. Your hand is not working. Hey, I, I just said her hand is not working. Meaning the team freeze. She didn't wear gloves. Are you wearing gloves? But you know the feel up. Uh -huh. Yeah, you want to wear the. Let me see the type of glove you're wearing. Ah, uh, this one it passes through. Let me see yours. No, this is stick. This is stick, right? What you are wearing? The code you go pass she some easily. Before. I gave her one. You gave her one. Yeah. She, she has become Canadian, no? Eh? When she first came to Canada, like some few months ago, she was wearing gloves even in the summer. But now, yeah, you know. Ajia, Ajia, Ajia. All right, all right. So, guys, let me. Uh, I'm gonna take them to a corner store, an African store, where they are gonna do some shopping. So let me take them there right now, okay? An African grocery store here, right here. All right, this is where they are coming to. So they were not too far from the place. So ladies, go inside, I'll wait for you. When you're done, I'll drop you guys off, okay? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, madam, the way you open it, though, you realize you don't enter uh, downfall for Nigeria many times, huh? Mm -hmm. You open the door like an expert. <laughs> All right, go inside and then... Mm -hmm. oh, let me flip the camera so that your faces don't show, okay? Oh, okay, your back can show, your back can show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, back to business. 
Okay, so they've gone inside. Live videos every so now. Plenty, plenty distraction here. Somebody will come and watch it next month, next to a person will insult me where this guy, why can't you go through this? How, how do I control these events on the road? <laughs> I they do video where I see people, I always go put this is my life, this is how I am. Anybody who knows me knows that when I meet you, so long as you be black, even if you don't be black, we be brown, so if I go say hello to you. See, yeah, the white people try to talk hello, but sometimes when they see you coming, they will put their head down and then go and see what they mean. <laughs> Especially when you don't shave and you are looking like that. when they see you, they get scared of me. So like, you know what I mean? I need to go see my barber. All right, so they are inside their shopping right now, they're going to shop, and then after that, I drop them over. Meanwhile, let's talk about the new policy. The people who are not affected by this first this policy number one people who are not married unmarried folks you're not affected why why are you not affected because this policy actually affects the married people more if affects only the married people M not just married people married people who are looking to bring their spouses along with them to canada or who are here and are now trying to bring their spouses and even these kind of married people who are affected and are trying to bring their spouses here are mostly married people who are international students, all right? So that's the first part there. If you're not married, you cannot be bothered. Maybe at least for now, maybe in the future you get married. The second group of people who are not affected by this policy are holders of postgraduate work permit. Holders of postgraduate work permit. Now, the assumption here is that you have already graduated from school and you have jumped onto a new immigration document called postgraduate work permit. So if you're a postgraduate work permit holder, you are not an international student. If you are a postgraduate work permit holder, you are not an international student. So therefore, this policy doesn't affect you because you are not a student. This policy only affects the spouses of those who are currently enrolled as students. You are not. Yesterday, I got messages from people, even calls. Some of you were worried. Say, oh, okay, so this thing now, will it affect me? Well, what is your status? Your status is that you are married to somebody who holds a postgraduate work permit. You are not affected by this. This policy doesn't affect you if you're a postgraduate work permit. It only affects somebody who is in school. So long as you are not in school, it also does not affect a permanent resident holder who is trying to bring their spouse out on a work permit. It doesn't affect you. If you have school and they want to bring their spouses here, do you understand? Uh -huh. All right. Then the next category of people who are not. So if you're a postgraduate work permit holder and your spouse has come here on a visitor's visa or your spouse is back home and you want to apply for an open work permit you can go ahead and still do that application it only affects those who are international students currently enrolled that is at least my understanding if you think you understand it in a better sense maybe i got it wrong you can always use the comment section to let me know and then i'll be happy to retract or review it okay but my understanding is that it does not affect people who are postgraduate work permit holders and are looking to file for a postgraduate work permit for their spouses or are trying to uh, change a visa visa to a an open work permit for their spouses just because they themselves, as the principal applicants, are postgraduate work permit holders. Okay, the obvious group of people who were mentioned in the policy in clear language yesterday, as I read in my video. If you haven't seen my video, make sure you watch my video, my most recent video on my YouTube channel. The the, the most obvious group of people who have not been affected are masters degree students master's degree student this policy does not actually affect anybody at all doing a master's or doing a phd if you're a master's or a phd student you should actually be smiling because this policy makes the life of master students way better in fact it is probably the best policy that a master student person could be dreaming of it doesn't affect you so if you're a master student you should not actually be bothered about this policy. It doesn't affect you. What, what, what does it mean? It simply means if you're a master's student holder, you are eligible to bring your spouse here on an open work permit because you are not affected by the new policy. If you are a master's degree holder, your spouse is going to get open work permit. It doesn't affect you. So you shouldn't be bothered. The ladies are coming in. Let me flip the camera before their faces show. 
Hmm, good. I've done that. All right. You are not affected. Masters, you are not affected. You are not affected at all. You. Yeah. The back now. Hmm. This side. Open that side. Okay. Is it possible for yeah. me to sit here? Yes. 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 You can sit here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Is this YouTube live? Yes. I'm live on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it doesn't affect the master's degree holder. Shouldn't be. You shouldn't. No, the door didn't. Can you? Oh, okay. You haven't closed the door yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. So do you live very close to, to her? Are you uh, close to her? Or you live in a different kind place. Of. Okay, I don't want you to mm -hmm. mention your address. You can just show me the address or pull it on the map, and I can take a look at it. So, We're who, who you are going to school or no, work? We went to Evans. Okay, no, we in where Saint Catherine's. Yeah. I don't wanna fall. Mm -hmm. Hey. Yeah. So hmm? drop us the they are going to another African store. Why well, didn't get what you were looking for here? Yes, yes. You did not get it. Yeah. Not, uh, not everything. Mm. You didn't get everything, so they want to go to another store in another city. So, yeah. Hi. So if people say you no go eat to Ibo food, <laughs> you no go eat to Ibo food. Hmm. But now you they for pizza. But now you they eat. But now you supposed to eat uh, uh, sweet uh, chicken wings. Hmm? Get food. They have chicken wings now. The one where they put uh, sugar. The one where they put sugar. And that one is just after food now. After just food. Like, they have like pizza food. now. They have pizza. Hmm? pizza they have pizza. Is pizza is not. Um, mm, pizza is not food, eh? Hey, the women say pizza no be food though. Italian pizza no be food. <laughs> anyway. Eh, uh, we want banco, no be so. <laughs> you want the bar? <laughs> eh, you want the <laughs> bar? All right. <laughs> Okay, so guys, master's degree people, Charlie, you are not affected. You you can bring your spouses in on an open web permit, no shaky. You understand? Master's, PhD, you are not affected at all. In fact, if there is anything at all, the new policy makes the life of a master's degree student better. Better. What do I mean by better? Before, somebody who does a one-year master's degree in Canada from a designated learning institution from a designated learning in other words an approved institution that awards degree okay when the person does a one-year study that person was entitled to a one time or a once in a lifetime one year postgraduate work permit so a one-year master's was equal to a one-year postgraduate work permit but under the new policy that was introduced just recently a one-year master's degree holder, somebody who pursues a one-year master's degree in Canada, is now entitled to a three years post-graduate work permit. For me, this is like the best. I did a one-year master's myself here, and I only got a one-year post-graduate work permit. Later on, I was able to negotiate and use some arguments, and then, you know, got an extension for another one year. But that was just grace. But normally, it's just a one-year master's leading to one-year post-graduate. But with a new policy, one year master's equals to three year postgraduate work permit. That means you get more time to actually stay here in Canada when you complete your one year master's student. In my opinion, this is going to create a lot of pressure or traffic towards master's degree programs, especially for those of you who are eligible. And that's your seatbelt. Uh, you know, you, most people are going to be targeting master's degree programs now, especially the one one year program, because how many people want to just go and spend time on a two year program when a one year program can equally give you a three years what postgraduate work permit because a two years master's will give you the same three years postgraduate work permit so a lot of people are going to be tactically or strategically picking what one year programs just because they know they can achieve the same outcome of getting a three years so i think master's degree folks you guys are way way better now there are there some groups of um, of students or programs that were also mentioned as part of those who can benefit from the new policy in terms of you know applying for open work permit for their spouses and all, or what have you um they mentioned bachelors in engineering they mentioned pharmacy programs they mentioned optometry uh, if you are doing a, your doc your, your doctorate or your phd in optometry if you're doing your 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 uh, your program degree in law or master's in law you are also entitled to get the open work permit if your spouse is trying to come in right and a whole bunch nursing 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 was also mentioned if you are a nursing student you also if you're coming to do a master's or bsc or so in nursing you stand to actually benefit so 
clearly you can tell that the new policy is not only giving people at the master's level and PhD level the opportunity to still continue to bring their spouses in on open work permit, but then it targeted certain programs that are not even at the master's level. Some of these programs are at the bachelor's level or undergraduate level, like nursing, engineering, you know what I mean? Law, pharmacy. This clearly tells you that Canada is migration is probably streamlining the spousal open work permit program to kind of target or reward those who are doing STEM related courses. STEM related courses. That would be science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Clearly, if you look at the names of the programs, you didn't see, of course, they, they had a Bachelor of Education there as well, which is an area that Canada needs a lot of people. Canada needs a lot of teachers, right? We have quite some deficit in the teaching area. So I'm not surprised that they added Bachelor of what? Education. So if you're coming to do your Bachelor of Education here at Ed, you know that you could also be eligible for an open work permit whilst you're in school if you want to bring your spouse in, right? But we didn't see courses like personal support worker at the college level. In fact, the biggest losers of this new policy are not just married people who are international students trying to bring their, student, uh, their spouses here. The biggest losers of this policy are people at the college level and general undergraduate programs. So if you are at the college level, this policy affects you. It simply means that so long as you are doing a college, don't even bother. Some of you will come here and ask questions like, oh, Choco, what if my program is a diploma distance in the college? So long as you are in a college, you are not entitled to it. I'm saying this again. I know some of you ask, but I'm doing this. It's, it says a postgraduate. They didn't say any postgraduate diploma program. All college programs, I, you are not eligible for an open work permit if you are in school and you want to bring your spouse in. So get this. Let this sink in there. You, are, you, cannot, you cannot go. So long as your program is not a master's degree, a PhD, or one of the programs that was mentioned, please forget it. You cannot bring your spouse here on an open work permit. At least not through the student route. Unless maybe you use a different program to kind of just bring your spouse in. They are so clear. They were specific. They mentioned it. You know, in the in the previous policy, they had hinted that they were going to start the 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 spousal open work permit restriction in the coming weeks. They didn't mention. Some of us were anticipating that they were actually will start this in September 2024, but then they came out and said that from March 19, that was when the policy goes into effect. Now, what if you have already submitted your application before the policy announcement yesterday? And you are trying to bring your spouse in on an open you've applied for an open work permit for your spouse at least before march 19. what do you do well they give some requirements you have to demonstrate that you are enrolled in your program as a student they will demand your enrollment letter they will demand your transcript they will demand proof of your what your 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 your, your relationship with your spouse if you say you're married they will ask for documents and then you have to make sure that you are actually also eligible for a work permit yourself you yourself need to make sure that you are eligible for a postgraduate work permit yourself isn't it once we're eligible then your spouse will also be eligible you understand okay so hey guys this is just to clarify the misconception there does this mean that canada does not want students canada still wants students i think what they're doing is just to streamline and uh, clear up guys let's be honest the international student population has blown up in the last two years two three years is blown up especially in the last two years it's blown up and uh, as much as it is a positive side it's a positive thing to many of us who are trying to bring our spouses and stuff like that it also has implications on any economy isn't it uh, because there is a lot of pressure when people come they're looking for jobs when people come they're looking for accommodation and every country takes decisions to actually protect the integrity of its, of its economy and not only that, but the institutions. So Canada has a right to change the immigration policy anytime. Doesn't like too much cooking. So anyway, <coughs> anyway. So the Nigerian lady here, we we're just vibing before I realized that the, the heat was bad. Um, I understand she's from a uh, River State, Port Harcourt. She's a port. So she's a port girl. All right. Yeah. She's not even a girl. She's a woman. Yeah. Single or married, madam. Oh, she's single. So she cannot be bothered by the new policy. <laughs> she cannot be bothered by the new policy, right? Because she don't get any husband. When she go bring from Nigeria, you understand? All the single men in Nigeria, 
I have one of your sisters here. Oh, she's single. Oh, eh? Don't come and ask me whether she found or she found. She, you want to know whether she found? Buy me, buy me Tom Tom. When you buy me Tom Tom, I'll tell you. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's a portacot lady. She's here. What are you studying? What course are you studying? Educational assistant. Educational. Oh, so you are in the same program? Yeah. Okay. The course is hitting you guys in the back and forth. That <laughs> assignment here, assignment there, assignment uh, there. Assignment no there. joke. No time to even scratch your armpit. Today eh? assignment. Today assignment. Tomorrow, uh, and even when you're on the holiday self, they are giving you assignment. assignment. And so, Canada, academic system will be joke. Oh. They will stress you. Hey, I'm not stressed about more than I'm about here. Adia, the way you make quiet for the back there. Even I say today, no get assignment. No mind down. Eh? <laughs> Adia is also from Ghana, specifically from Newtown. So Newtown, one of our, one of, yeah, 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 from Ghana, Newtown, Newtown. She be Newtown. She be, she be, she be Newtown woman. You see what that mean? If it's so, if it's so, if it's so. All right. So back to the policy. Uh, what was I talking about before the 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 the, the, the video Spouse. went off? Yeah, I forgot Radio. exactly. Uh, I forgot the last sentence I was on. Uh, somebody, can somebody remind me? I forgot. I think I talked about, I talked about masters and I said masters are not affected. Okay, I, th I, I was talking about the fact that it affects the, the colleges more. Yeah, so long yeah. as you are in a college, guys, remember, so long as you're in a college, guys, you don't even need to stress yourself. Just look at your letter of ad, uh, acceptance. Does it say you are doing a master's degree or BSc nursing or BA, Bachelor of Education, or does it, I, I cannot explain this too much. I know some of you will be trying to use terms like, but I'm doing the postgraduate diploma. I beg, you are not eligible. Simple as that. But it says graduate diploma. The programs that were mentioned, they mentioned them all. So all you have to do is go and look at the list of programs. If the list of programs that are there, you are not doing one of those. Your letter of acceptance does not say you are doing master's degree, PhD, doctor of optometry, doctor of medicine, doctor of this place, you are out. By out, it doesn't mean you can never bring your spouse here, but it means for the time that you are an international student, you cannot bring your spouse on an open work permit. So what then are the other options for me? The other options could be a visitor's yeah. visa. You could apply for a visitor's visa for your spouse to come and visit you. Of course, when they come, they can stay in the country for a period of up to seven, uh, six months consecutively. And then they're receiving a way you can extend that. You know what I mean? So at least there is still a way. There is still a way. The only thing is that most people want to bring their spouses in so that their spouses can work and support them. Right? Your spouse has an open work permit. You yourself, you have a student visa. Whilst you're in school, your spouse is working and generating money and stuff. Because imagine bringing your whole family here and then you are not generating any income through your spouse and it's just you going to school. In fact, the educational system here has been designed in such a way that you will be busy and busy and busy and busy for the most part as an international student. You barely will have time to actually go and work. Do you want a proof of that? Let me give you a proof of that. My sister, you from Nigeria, since you came here, how many months now? It's been three months. Good. Three months. Three months now, right? Yeah. So you came in January there about, isn't it? Uh, I came in last year. You came last year. You came in December, so yeah. three, four months now, yeah. right? Good. Now, since you came and you started your program, mm -hmm. how much time do you have to work? Um, if you were for, to get a job right now, Monday to Friday, really during the day, much how much time, time do you have to work? Depending on our timetable. Depending. So based on your own timetable, how much time do you have to work in the uh, day? How much uh, time do you have to work in the day? Let's say, it depends, actually. Will you be able to work eight hours a day? No, no, no. Why not? No, no time, time for that. no time because of your courses. No no so? All right, so now this one we will they take place school fees. Say they won't work, they uh -huh. pay your school fees. Is it possible <laughs> for, where? for where you heard somebody just answer? Adia, you've also been here uh, for some few months now, three, four months or so, right? Adia, do you also have in fact, your Adia's answer is the same as Adia could tell you sometimes when I when I visit Adia, do you know what she say? Choco, look on the table. I haven't even had the time to unpack my bag. Since I came, I've just been busy, 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 busy. From school, then this and that, no time. With kids on top, and she came with her kids too. And her kids, they are full-time work. Especially the youngest one, full-time work. Without pay. You understand? It's stressful. So, having your spouse here, 
on an open web permit could go a long way to help. But with the new policy, unfortunately, it is not. Um, I can try and read my meaning into why they're doing that. Maybe they want to use that to control the population. Because you know what UK said, right? The United Kingdom, UK's immigration policy, their home, home office, came out and said that some countries, when one international student comes, they come with three or four people. So every one international student that comes into the country potentially could bring up to four people. If you want to be very conservative, you can say every one international student could bring two to three people. That is if they are bringing just their spouse or their kids. Of course, it's not every international student who is married, but the data shows that majority are married and they would love to come with their entire family. So therefore, you see, like Adia, for example, Adia came as an international student. Adia, how many luggages did you come? <laughs> when I say luggages, I mean human luggages. <coughs> how many human luggages did you come along with you? Four. Okay, one of them is your what? One of them is your husband. He's on an open. <coughs> and then the other three human luggages are? your kids so Adria alone she she brought four one is two four you see what they mean uh -huh. so the new policy where Adria she did college oh. so like she don't look sharp apply early like by now he did there uh, like your husband your husband go day new town way he go this sort you know all the people are for new town oh lie no but Charlie that is the fact of it that's the fact of it all right because some countries Especially some countries that are like we have big families, you know, Africa and uh, uh, Asia, or even when I say Asia, some parts of Asia, not all, because Chinese they don't give birth that much, right? Yeah. Chinese mostly one. Some, especially Africa, or, uh, Spanish people, or brown people, we tend to have large mm -hmm. family sizes. So I think one of the reasons why they're doing this is to just to reduce the numbers that are coming. Mm. Overall, just to reduce the numbers. You can see that they are aiming to reduce the... In fact, they, they've actually made a decision to reduce the intake of students by 35%, which is huge. And the next policy that we even have go to make it more than 35% is the restriction on spousal work, mm. work permit. If you throw that in, that could mean another 35 to 40% overall. So at the end of the day, you have international students who are coming in and... But wait, why did they decide to allow masters and PhD and the other people to come in? Because... They have figured out that colleges are much easier to go to. The requirement to go into college is easy peasy. All you need sometimes yeah. is just a secondary school education. Mm -hmm. Even if you had a second class lower, sometimes with a third class, some colleges will still give you admission. And they've also realized that some colleges are running, excuse my words, useless programs. Useless <laughs> programs. Most of the new, new colleges or some of the colleges, they are only after the money. Useless programs. Eh? useless program programs that have no prospects on the job market programs that you know you know eh, eh, one of the eh, should i should i use it one of them okay i don't want anybody to be offended but who cares if you're offended it's my opinion do i have an eh, am i entitled to my opinion one of the most useless programs in my own opinion is international business management you will go do that because they ask what, what if what are you going to do you know what i mean useless but you will go they will admit 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 they will admit ah, admit that they will even be admitting our ancestors <laughs> you see some useless programs and you see majority sometimes when you go to the class oh my goodness 90 percent of the students indians two percent africans one percent canadians the other three percent yet to be born <laughs> they are also there they are awarding certificate program so many in my class five africans Five Africans in your class. Yes. How many Indians? Ah. Ah. <laughs> we know the count. How many Nine Indians? Indian take over class. Uh -huh. Over 40 or maybe 30 or something. No, Plenty. There are even more than 40. Five. All right. And five okay, Africans. this is not about country attacks and stuff like that. But I'm only letting you know that, Charlie. Some of the programs that are organized by colleges, they are useless. So they are so easy. So you see that a lot of people who would not have been able to go into graduate programs, like master's degree programs, where you have to do this. Is it Charlie the master's be hard though? Hey, the thing, the master's degree, somebody tell you say it no be hard. The person he they lie to you, eh? <coughs> because Adia way they here plus my sister from Port Harcourt. Them said they really do masters, so you know be masters they, they do, they, they do college program. And comparatively, co college programs or uh, diplomas are supposed to be less stressful compared to what? Mm -hmm. Masters. Yeah. But even them, your own, they ground or you know they ground. Ah, they ground, the full ground. 
know in Ghana when we say a day ground, it means that oh, I entered the wrong place. I should have entered the other side. In Ghana, when we say it day ground, it simply means it's easy. Ah, it's not easy. It, so it day ground or you know day ground. No day. Today you are learning Ghana PG. <laughs> You know the ground. He did the sky. You did jump. You did catch him. I did see the Niger woman here. You see, so now you know one Ghana PG. Yeah. You know the ground. The thing hard. When Ghana man say you know the ground, means the thing hard. Hi, and that femo, and that fem. Where the best boy? Where? Even the college, they already see top. So imagine masters where they do twenty page papers every now and then. So you have to submit a twenty page original work. You know. You, or you have to submit this and do a thesis and do this and do this. Masters is stressful. PhD is double life. By the time you finish your PhD, you have earned salvation into your next life. <laughs> PhD. That one we don't even talk about. Colleges are easier compared to masters and PhD. So a lot of people have targeted the colleges. They are quicker, easy to. Worst case scenario, reflection. Write a reflection. Do a group work. Do a group project. You are done. Masters, my goodness, independent work. You are in a library. You are researching. So because of that, the demand for masters, the demand for masters, the demand for PhD have all gone down. We are at Ibanos, but I'm going to go inside. So you guys can open the door. I'll come and join you guys. So you see, I brought them all the way from Welland to St. Catherine's, another city. We actually drove through about three or four cities to get here right now. But you can tell there was no traffic on the road, right? Three, four cities. We're already here. 20 minutes i brought them all the way i had no intention to come here but actually these are some of the things when you step you can meet people all the time anyway they couldn't get all the things they wanted in the other african store so i brought them all the way here so this is ibano supermarket remember it's what is it's, it's actually the biggest supermarket and the biggest african this was a no be african low because it'd be general this is ibano supermarket this is in catherine's come and do your shopping here hello how are you yeah, I see you went in there to buy. Do you like this store? Oh, what did you want? What were you looking for? Kimchi. Kimchi. That's Korean. Yeah. That's Korean. Oh my goodness. I'm going to tell them to get some more Korean stuff in there. So sorry, okay? Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Yeah. So the Canadian woman was looking for Kimchi, which is a Korean, uh, Korean stuff, but she couldn't get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Adia Muni in grandchildren, some be this. So I'm kidding. She the cook rough. This is if, if you eat her food, you go do like this. Charlie, <laughs> what's the way they cook like this? Yeah, you no. Know? She she the cook. She the cook correct, correct, correct food. Man, Charlie, eh, make her go out. There is some sound playing there. I might get some copyright stuff. So let me just stay here and do my thing. When I finish, I'll go. All right. So colleges are the most affected. So if you're a college student, you just got to your admission and you've been planning to maybe apply for an open web permit or some of you were hoping to use a visitor visa route. Oh, a visitor visa route so that you could now come in and change by doing flagpole. It changes the whole dynamic of the story. Well, it's still better. It's still better to come in. Hello, how are you? It's still better to allow it's still better to allow your spouse. I, I don't think it's bad. It's, it's better to still let your spouse come on a visitor visa because the, uh, there is a saying that if at least you cannot get two, you are targeting two. Uh, uh, half a loaf is better than one none. So if the work permit option is not there, and at least your, your spouse can come on a visitor visa, it's not a problem. But I don't think if your spouse has a better option back home, you should still force to bring your spouse. For example, your spouse has a good job, they're doing fine. Why is stress to bring them on a visitor visa when they are not coming to work because they are not eligible to work? And then your bill goes up. Maybe your housing bill goes up because you need a two, three bedroom and it's, it's so stressful. So do you also bring your children? That will be a decision you have to make because sometimes when you bring your children, it you need babies. Man, child care here is a big deal. You are in school as a student. Maybe you were a woman. You came in with your child. Who is going to take care of a child for you when you're going to school? You know, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Sometimes we have to, Adia, for example, I know her. Sometimes she has to get somebody to come and take care of the kids when she is gone. Of course, uh, uh, two of them are already in school, but the youngest one is home. Can you take your young child to the classroom? No. That's the toughest. So you, got, you have to make decisions on it. Um, 
Beyond that, if you were to finish your program and then you apply for a postgraduate work permit, then you can actually apply for an open work permit for your spouse. That is why having a visa visa for your spouse could still be a viable option because it is much easier changing from a visa visa to an open work permit if you are a postgraduate work permit holder, especially if you finish school, regardless of whether you are a college student or not. It's much easier. You can do a flat pole and change that, all right? So I think that is the aspect of it that we want to. So I hope this addresses the misconceptions here. Not, Canada has not closed the border on everyone. Only some people are affected, and sadly, it is. Some of you may be also wondering, um, what if, uh, is there a way, can I change school? I think a lot of people will be doing that. A lot of people will be changing school, especially those of you who are eligible for master's degree programs. Some of you are overqualified. In fact, I saw a professor. I saw a professor from Nigeria. I've also, um, I've not met this man. There is also a professor from Ghana, a Ghanaian professor. So meaning that that's somebody with a PhD who was lecturing at the University of Ghana, and he's here. And he's not doing a PhD, he's not doing a master's. He's here to do a college program, college. I'm not downgrading the program, because I'm telling you that sometimes people who are overqualified may end up still going to colleges because it is easier, quicker to do, not too stressful. Do you understand? So some of you may have very good master's degree, but you chose not to do a second master's, you rather came to colleges so and you still got your visa. Some of you may even have like a really good bachelor's degree, second class upper, or maybe a second lower. That could still get you into some master's degree program. But then you did all your analysis, school fees comparison, masters are expensive, isn't it? So masters are 20 something thousand, 30,000. Some can even go to 40,000, especially the MBAs. So sometimes people, people will be doing all the analysis and comparing and be like, hmm, masters is expensive. Not only is it expensive, it is stressful. Not only is it stressful, it's too much, you know? Too much, too much. Why not just go do a sixteen, seventeen thousand dollar college, you know? And then when I finish that, I can still get my papers. It's all about getting the papers, isn't it? That is why the Canadian immigration, in my opinion, I'm not saying that's what they said. In my opinion, that is why I think the Canadian immigration decided to now make it more easier for masters and PhD and those courses people don't like to do: Bachelor of Nursing, Masters in Nursing, Optometry. Masters in medicine, masters in law, bachelor of law, engineering. People don't want it. We want all those easy, easy, easy ones. International business management. This, this, this. Boom, we are done, isn't it? That we had in Kenya, right? But the country is basically saying that they want people who can address. Anyway, beyond that, I also think that the decision they made actually lines up or is in line with somehow it is in line with the needs of Canada at this very time. Because right now, man, Canada has a lot of people who have all these liberal art courses or certificates or, uh, or diplomas. And their transition is a little bit difficult. Why? What do I mean? Most of us who do the liberal courses here, when we finish, we're just making minimum wage salaries. You know? Um, it's not easy for some of us to actually go up. But those courses that people don't like, the, the nursing, the, the engineering, the doctors, the this, the medicine, the pharmacy, these are the ones that actually pay better. These are the ones that are about $100,000 or more. And because it is stressful doing them, people don't want them. But those are also the areas where there is a massive need in not just Canada, but in Germany. Not just Germany, but in US. Not just US. So the US, for example, they're pretty smart about it. When you go to the US, you notice that most of their visas, they have different kinds of visa programs that reward people who do STEM. STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. You know, in the US, if you go and you study engineering, you do a master's in engineering or mathematics or physics, or you are a law student from the US and stuff, you notice that it is much easier for you to not just get employment that can come with certain benefits. It is easier to do so many. Or those of you who are in the health sector in the US, you know it. You guys can easily or computer or IT or tech. It's much easier. But what about the general art, which is where most of these colleges are packaged in there, you know? Indirectly, it is a way to kind of just streamline the colleges and just make sure that they are actually churning out programs that are more competitive. The colleges used to be a place where people could go to and get trade certificate, trade certificate, trade certificate, carpentry, renovation, plumbing. I'm not saying they, don't, they no longer do that. But now you see that the liberal art thing has also entered. Pretty much what has also happened in Africa. 
when polytechnics were created, they were created with the intention of producing trace graduates. Graduates will come out as people who can use their hands to fix problems. Construction, you know, draftsman, architect, blah, blah, blah. What do we see today? Today you go to call, uh, polytechnics and 60% of their programs are all liberal arts or business. You know, marketing, sales, this, that. What has it got to do with the polytechnic? So now people go to polytechnic and we are not coming out with skills that are not, you know, that are trace related. It's almost like we are competing with the universities to create all those liberal arts. So basically that same situation is also happening here. The difference here is that Canada is a very proactive country. They will look at the needs of the country and then they will make decisions. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, it is what it is. So therefore, if you are eligible for master's, this could be a good time. That said, I will be dropping a video. Uh, I believe either today or tomorrow, I will drop a video which will actually show you some of the best options you can take to get a fast master's degree uh, admission and all of that without having to worry too much. So make sure you are sticking. That video will be uploaded on my YouTube channel. So make sure you are actually sticking on my YouTube. Either today, I, I have done a video already actually. I'm just waiting to upload it. So just keep an eye on that. I'm going to be uploading that. I think a lot of people are going to be pivoting to master, especially if you're eligible. And um, even, look, what if I got a college admission and I have um, a, my visa and I'm supposed to come and go to college, but then I equally have a bachelor's that could easily get me into a master's. Choco, can I change? Of course you can change. That is why the video I'm going to do, you need to watch it so that you can take advantage. As you did a college, if the master's come, just hop from college, master's, college, master's. You see, as I hop said, the door said they open up. College, master's, college, master's. From college to master's. Then when you go there, now you have automatically just made it easier for your spouse to now come. Because the moment you switch to a master's, your spouse gets to come be with you, isn't it? Maybe so. God bless you for watching. Let me go inside. I'm going to go inside right now and then do what I have to do with the ladies. Like, okay? But let me end this video. Maybe I'll come back and do another live. Else, when I go inside, I'm going to get a copyright. I'm going to get the music playing there. I'm going to get a copyright. So that's why I'm here. See what I mean? The system is working. All the best. If you like this video, make sure you're subscribing. Follow. Hate the like. Share with your friends. And then let's see how best we can make some smart decisions. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.